hours. Really? That's so interesting because I feel like men are always sweating. I sleep with my, my AC on year round. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I mean, it's not really that great for the environment. <laughs> okay. Wait, that's really overwhelming that you sleep for a third of your life. I mean, I'm not an animal. Hey, HP Fit, it's Olivia. Um, Hannah is not here today, I'm taking over as we talk about sleep because it's a really personal issue for me. I have the worst night's sleep. I have terrible nighttime anxiety. Um, so we're working with Beauty Rest to kind of see how we can get to the bottom of women's sleep issues. So today we have Dr. Rebecca Robbins and she's gonna be laying down the law in terms of how women should be approaching their nighttime routine, their daytime routine, and how they can fix their sleep. So Dr. Robbins is Beauty Rest sleep expert. I'm not sure what that means, so I'm gonna let her take it away and explain to you. Thank you, Olivia. It's great to be here with you uh, and come with, with a scientific perdective on the importance of our sleep. My day-to-day uh, -day is a researcher uh, at NYU School of Medicine where my work looks at the critical link between our sleep and our waking success, really all aspects of our lives. And how important they are together. Indeed, and they go so hand in hand. Precisely, and so it's a lot of fun to bring the science to um, to people who need it the most through Beauty Rest and, and through the, the great work that you do also on your blog. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit how you got into sleep. Like, what, why sleep? I'm assuming school, medicine first, and then sleep, but what made you become an expert? <laughs> Um, now, I started in the field about uh, over a decade ago, and I was working as a research assistant during my undergraduate um, years at Cornell. I thought it was a job and something that I was doing to, you know, get research experience totally. and just sleep was the context. Um, but truly, I, I honestly suffered with sleep throughout my teenage years, and now we actually have a tremendous amount of evidence to suggest that teenagers are some of the worst off. Um, they face physiological changes in their body, the delay I mean, their preferred being a teenager is like a nightmare. So. <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, and, and there might be some evidence to, to suggest that it starts with, with challenging sleep habits uh, okay. in those groups. So I came from You're that. Like Staying up late, talking to your phone or to your friends on your phone. Exactly. In my case, it was AIM. <laughs> That's right. AOL. That was all. But now people all have like rage. Snapchat. Yeah. Totally. Good it, God, you can pay me money hand. to be a teenager again. <laughs> so um, there's just so much, as you pointed out, going on in the, the adolescent's body. So that was kind of um, my personal experience that I came to, to the, the sleep field with. And I, I, again, thought it was just kind of a job that I was doing while I was an undergraduate to get good experience in the research realm. And I quickly fell in love with the field and I just became so excited because we, we really know, and especially as a population, so much about exercise and nutrition, other areas of health, but truly there's a lot of room to, um, to, to move the needle on our awareness about good sleep habits. So as a woman, I think women have a harder time with sleep than men. Based on my relationships, they certainly have slept better than I have, and just based on talking to my friends. So what do you think it is about being a woman that makes it so much more difficult for us to get a good night's sleep? That experience definitely resonates with the literature. We see that women struggle with sleep, uh, they have more disrupted sleep, lower quality sleep, and they have a harder time um, especially falling asleep and quieting the mind. And we might be able to draw on an evolutionary argument for that if we um, look at the traditional role of a woman, it's the caretaker, and perhaps to have lighter sleep to hear a baby cry. Um, so that might be one argument, but women are also- We're literally biologically like light sleepers. <laughs> that could be one argument. Got it. Uh, but we do know that we see that difference between men and women and the quality of sleep that we're able to get. So um, for women, we do have to work a little bit harder to really quiet our mind. At everything. <laughs> um, and get the good quality rest that will, that will power our waking lives. Okay. so. What's your sleep routine? Like as the expert, how should I be approaching sleep or, no. or any woman in general? Great question. Um, I don't think it has to be hard. I think a couple small changes can go a long way for all of us. Now there are uh, differentially diagnosable sleep disorders, um, sleep apnea, restless legs, that affect a smaller proportion of the population that make it harder for, for those individuals to fall asleep. But for the vast majority of us, it, frankly, it starts with an attitude shift. Um, Viewing sleep I love that. as a critical part of your waking An success, attitude shift. Um, something that will fuel your performance on, you know, at the gym or in the sports arena if you're an athlete, and also your professional life and an ability to come up with creative solutions to complex problems and manage your time efficiently. Efficiently, so it's a little bit of a myth that we can pull from the hours of our sleep and add them to our day, because when we take away from our sleep, our 
performance goes down, um, again, athletically, intellectually, cognitively, and then your health begins to suffer. So attitude change is huge. Start to look at sleep. As change your you attitude. <laughs> That's kind of like an HP Fit philosophy in general, That's that like wellness funny. starts like within, so mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Absolutely. So um, other things that I, um, I strongly recommend, again, small changes go a long way. Looking at the quality of your bedroom. Walk in and do you find yourself relaxed looking at your bed and your your environment you have nice thick curtains that can block out the, the light that might come in um, are you living in a, a quiet place because we do see that noise can disrupt the quality of your sleep so in New York City after moving here two years ago um, but earplugs can help but do you find that now that the sounds like help you so now that I am used to living in New York and the, the city sounds do um, maybe not help, but they at least I'm not distracted by them. But earplugs or noise machines like an air purifier or one of the um, kind of programmable noise machines can help you um, if, if noise is a, a barrier to your sleep. Um, so quiet, dark, and temperature also is a huge factor in the bedroom environment. Mm. Turn yeah, I've read that. Sit down, especially Ooh, for women. So women prefer a colder bedroom environment and get um, it seems better sleep in a cooler environment compared to men, where men are a little bit um, better able to sleep in different temperatures. Really? That's so interesting because I feel like men are always sweating. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm always sweating too, but I, I like a cold. I sleep with my, my AC on year round. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I mean, it's not really that great for the environment. <laughs> But for your sleep. Yeah. Uh, now, the other things to keep in mind, um, often we don't refresh our mattress as often as um, we can. Our mattress actually just lasts about ten, um, eight to ten years. So if you are on the, the market That's for a new mattress, do make sure that it's um, so where some people prefer coils or, um, or, or memory foam. A nice combination of both is the uh, Beauty Ross Black Hybrid, and I sleep on the Sonia of that line, and I can't say enough good things about it. Um, and that provides the the coils that will allow for airflow and cooling of the body, mm -hmm. and then added comfort of foam at night. So if you're in that kind of eight to ten year mark and finding that luckily I'm not is because very... I'm still so young <laughs> that I haven't like had a mattress that long, but. Good to know. Change your mattresses. Also, what about flipping them? Does that still apply? I don't really know. Like, it's been a while since I've... Um, especially if they're... I've never bought my own mattress, I guess I should confess. Okay. It was like a, a, a graduation a gift. Yes, inspired. yes, yes. Experience. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and that's common. Uh, but for the mattresses that do have a coil and maybe foam topper, the best thing would be to rotate, rotate. them instead okay. of flipping. But some mattresses can... Rotate your beds, girls. Okay. <laughs> also, pillows. Um, that's the foundation of your sleep because your, your head's on that surface every night for ideally about a third of your life. Um, you, you should spend sleeping. Wait, that's really overwhelming that you sleep for a third of your life. It's remarkable. And it's a very kind of... Kind of equilibrium if you think about everyone sleeps it, it's kind of fascinating yeah. it blows my mind in some ways that people are really I mean, we have to be horizontal you know to get our to kind of pay back the what we um, yeah you know, totally are waking it's almost like every hour we're awake kind of adds a brick in terms of a little bit more tired a little bit more such that by bedtime you know that rolls around we call that sleep pressure in the sleep field that you're you're tired and yeah. sleep will come and it's okay to be tired mm -hmm. so what's a good amount of sleep the recommendation for most adults is seven hours. Okay. There's some individual difference. Yeah, I have to get nine hours majority. of sleep. Do I'm you? like a baby. You're I, on the longer side. Yeah, I can go to bed at like eight o'clock, so I have to like make sure I'm active until it's time for me to hit the pillow, because then I pass out. Interesting. And is that yeah. hard for you to kind of prioritize bed and the, in a, the same No, it is not. It's or? actually like I have to not prioritize that if that makes sense like I have to be like doing something if I lay down on my couch at like eight o'clock I'll just pass out and I think it's because I don't sleep through the night entirely okay. so I'm just like ec a little extra tired okay so fragmented sleep that's yeah so let's talk about that. that women face now um, the ideal situation would be consolidated rest seven full hours um, for you maybe slightly more for others some slightly less um, it is fascinating that we really see that the, the vast majority does have a, around that seven hour mark um, so that very few are on the earlier side there's kind of a myth of okay you know, some people only get by on with that if that's a, a barrier for you if you find yourself waking up at three o'clock in the morning or um, you know whatever the time might be for you sometimes those are actually behaviorally induced and kick that habit by um, as soon as you get up commit to following a routine uh, much like what we do to power down at night. If you get up at, in the middle of the night, try not to look at the clock. Um, one good idea is to remove any clocks from your, your bedroom. Um, maybe just have an iPhone that would have an ambient screen that would go dark after you know it locks. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to say when I 
lived in the country, you know, go in the other room of your house and just... You're like, when I had more space, when I had outdoors. But we all live in studio, you know, small spaces here in New York. So it's not always, um, it's not always possible, but just change the environment. Even if it's just moving to a small chair that's next to your bed. And what we do there is we start to condition ourselves to look at sleep as a reward. We go there when we're tired. Mm -hmm. And if you wake up, do a, a relaxation routine, go to the bathroom, you know, do anything you need to do and then come back when you're tired and you should be able to kick those. Okay. Things. So like read or something. Yes. Okay. Exactly. What about meditate? What about tech? Like what about, I actually recently just started not checking my phone when I wake up cause I would be like awake at like one thirty or two and I would check my phone cause I was like bored or just like not tired. Or I didn't think I was tired and I would stay up till like four. Mm-hmm. But now that I don't check it, I fall asleep so much faster. So like That's this blue light thing great. is real. And especially when you wake up in the middle of the yes. night. Because then um, what you're doing there is you're exposing yourself to bright blue light, but it's also stimulating content. So even though Apple has the, and um, some of the other cell phone uh, manufacturers have the great um, new functions to change the, the ambient color temperature mm-hmm. on your phone. So yeah, like nighttime mode blue, or yes, night shift, night whatever it's shift, called. Yeah. Huge fan. Yeah. Um, Does it work? So it works. Still, it blocks the bright blue light, okay. which triggers the awake phase of our circadian rhythm. Circadian means about a day. Mm-hmm. And so the whole um, body of science there says that there are times when we're awake and alert and right. there are times where we power down. And that's tagged with different things that are happening in the body. Okay. So when you enter a dark room, that triggers the release of melatonin, which brings on the sleepy phase of your circadian rhythm. Okay. And then conversely, it's bright. It's like why light you fall asleep in the movie the theater. Alert Yes, exactly. Got it. Um, and then conversely, bright light is the best trigger of your alert phase of your circadian rhythm. Okay. So if you're up and checking, you know, bright blue right. light emitting device or using that before bed, it is not ideal. Change to a book or as you're doing so beautifully, right. try to resist that urge. Um, one, um, and again, small changes go a long way. And I think you can kind of use behavioral economics and little hacks to keep yourself from doing, you know, opening your phone when you do wake up, maybe putting your phone on the other side of the room, having your charger be like near the door. I mean, I'm not an animal, but I keep, I keep it on my nightstand, but I just like have a hard, do not check it until like That's six, great, five, six a.m. So, keep um, so, and then before bedtime, do you advise not like being on your phone, mm-hmm. not being we on your computer? We do have evidence that it's so hard to resist that temptation. Yeah. And many of us, um, there's actually some research done at, at Google and they found in a question and the, the wording was, do you use your phone up until the minute you're falling asleep? And it's something like 70% of Americans said, That's crazy. Yes, We're sick. I do. We have problems. <laughs> um, so trying to switch to a book would be the best case scenario where you don't have the bright right. light of a screen, but there are some e-readers that do have a, a softer screen okay. that emulate a book um, beautifully. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's another great option. But the time right before bed is really key, um, and it's a really important part of a sleep routine because it would be wonderful if I had a pill or something I right. could give you to put you to sleep um, or turn your mind off. Like well, our there headphones. are pills, but we try not to like encourage <laughs> to other like holistic ways of taking mm-hmm. care of yourself. Exactly. Although exactly. nothing wrong with taking medication. <laughs> if you need. Whatever works for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, but the time before bed is, is really part of sleep because we can't turn our, our minds off um, as easily as we can our iPhones. It really takes time. So looking at the space before bed, maybe it's 30 minutes before your regular power, you know, kind of lights out time, bedtime. Think of the most relaxing things to you, whether that's meditation or breathing exercises or thinking about loved ones or, um, you know, maybe meditating on something good that happened that day. Whatever will help you ease into sleep. And frankly, the children in our society do this so well. They have a warm glass of milk Wait, you know, that's so 30 cute. minutes before bed and mommy reads or dad yeah, reads yeah. Them a bedtime story. So we'd actually be really well served to take right. a page from that book. So Like have your roommate read you a bedtime story. <laughs> That is a great idea. You hear that, Katie? I'm going to have you read me a bedtime story tonight. She's going to be like, they were so weird, but she would love it. Um, okay, so what's your routine? Like, what, do you get a full night's sleep? Are you perfect? I am human also, okay. Olivia. So um, one of the biggest challenges is we live in this interconnected world, and with the ability to turn on a, a television show on on the, you know, the internet and then it goes right to the next show. So right. you really have to get up and, you know, hit yeah. no, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to bed. Are you still there? So there's like, so many oh, yeah. temptations. Yeah. Totally. So I do try to practice what I preach. Uh, I try to make at least time for six and a half and seven hours. Okay. Um, it's a priority for me. And then the power down routine I've also found cause I am type A. Right. So, um, really doing a couple of minutes of meditation, um, aromatherapy. I also really believe in. Can do you have a TV in your room? I do not. Okay. I think that's like a big thing. Mm-hmm. TV at bedtime is not. Yeah. 
Mm. There are some people who swear by television and right. helping them fall asleep. That's I just true. probably discourage the nightly news. Yeah. That might not be the best program <laughs> yeah. to be watching. <laughs> no. Especially right now. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So um, making time, again, like we talked, um, creating a bedtime routine. And then f- another really healthy part of a good sleep routine is be mindful about your practices. So we're so lucky in the world that we live in. There are tons of opportunities on your cell phone, on your, um, there's an app that you can put just right on your mattress or um, the beauty rest sleep tracker also. You can slip right under, under your mattress and it passively Yeah, I just tra- started using that. Of course of the night. And it just like oh, alarmed me a little bit because it's like, okay, you need to like figure out why you aren't sleeping from like one to three, mm-hmm. but I'm working on it and well, have, hopefully after this session. with awareness. And yes. So just being aware can help t- promote the mindfulness and the reflection on the, that day. So maybe what did I do that day? Did I have caffeine too late in the day or was something bothering me at work? And then you can that next night say, okay, what might I do better mm-hmm. so I can sleep through the night? So it's just like all about being mindful like everything else and creating habits. So what would you say are the most common sleep issues that people face? We Our audience is mostly women, but mm-hmm. we do have a 2% male audience that we could probably address the two percent (laughs) um but yeah so what what do you see i know i know mine is like i can't get back to sleep some people Mm -hmm. have a hard time falling asleep you mentioned caffeine what are some other things that people come to you with? Or there are really not a you, host but. of different sleep issues, and they really depend from person to person. Um, the three c- components of insomnia are trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or waking up too early. Um, and then there also are variations along the kind of spectrum to being diagnosed with, with insomnia. Mm-hmm. And that really is a prolonged issue for two weeks or more. But we all experience sleep difficulties. Um, a hard, you know, a tough conversation with a boss could trigger some difficulty totally. falling asleep at night. So they do vary pretty drastically from one person to the next. Uh, but all the sleep tips we talked about um, could really apply to, to all different types of people. But one um, good piece of news is that a lot of them are modifiable and it starts like we've talked about with attitude change um, but then the awareness and mindfulness that can come from maybe tracking your sleep or just being a little bit more mindful about your sleep practices or things we frankly do during the course of the day um, that matter for our sleep at night. Um, One significant one though is sleeping in an uncomfortable or a stuffy bedroom. We see that time and again. Really? Um, And I always, I'd like to It's so funny to me like I feel like your bedroom, at least a New Yorker, right? Like your bedroom is like Mm. your living room your maybe your dining Precisely. room Perhaps but so. i feel like it's more important it's to, most importantly to, yeah. your bed can be where you manage your taxes your you know play with your dog eat your meals totally <laughs> so trying to resist that yeah and looking to the mattress and um the bedding that you have also on your mattress your pillows those are small modifiable things that we can all change an individual difference also there there are many so yeah. some people really love you know pima cotton uh, but i've heard people also love linen so making sure most important with all things in the bedroom especially the bed the mattress pillows sheets go to the store and feel the, the fabrics. Are they soothing and relaxing to you? Because that's all you want before bed. You want to look at your you know, your bedroom environment as a place that is a reward after a stressful, crazy totally. day and your time. Um, that you really protect um, that time so that you can perform at your peak when you wake up. Okay, so tell me about waking up. This is my routine in the morning. I immediately check my phone because I've limited myself from like looking at it the whole night. So I like check my phone and go on Instagram, email, and then I get my computer and go on email. And then I eventually get out of bed and like make myself a matcha or something before Mm -hmm. I work out. Am I doing that wrong? Lots of individual difference. (laughs) You're a busy working professional and um, have so much going on. So I mean, I'm DMing my friends sometimes. (laughs) Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, But if that's what you need to do, and you know, the first thing in the morning, fantastic. Um, In a perfect world, I know I'm guilty sometimes of opening my phone and and getting to emails right away. But it would be really lovely to start our days, you know, maybe with a small meditation to just kind of start the day well and and breathe and have that be the first thing that you do. Um, There's a great book out called Make Your Bed, and um, General McRaven, um, a military official, uh, he has said for the longest time in his, um, you know, in his barracks, make your bed first. Got, like those hospital corners, that. yeah. Those, exactly. I wish I was like that. And I, what I love about that is you start your day off with a success. Totally. And I think that's really beautiful. An easy all, habit. Yeah. Yes, and something that helps you feel a little bit better. So right. um, maybe if emails are stressing you out, it might be, um, I loved the mantra part right. of that routine in the workout. <laughs> Eat it. Um, and particularly, a really good part of the wake-up routine is getting blue light. Now, okay. it's hard in the winter months, but even if it's walking 
walking to the subway in their clouds, you'd be surprised. The light is pretty able to get through and um, get into your eyelids, yeah. which is the kickstart to the circadian rhythm. And that'll, Here we go. We're back at that, that cycle. Yeah. Indeed. And it's the best natural wake up method. It can be hard too, I think, in New York to kind of like mm. get that natural light, but mm. definitely. But walking to the subway or going down to get the newspaper, getting your coffee, um, just a little go, bit. Going to the bodega. Yeah. <laughs> For that $2 hazelnut. Yeah. <laughs> or actually I just go and spend like $6 on kombucha. I swear they stock kombucha for me at my bodega. It's amazing. They're <laughs> amazing. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. I think it was really informative what you had to say. I think as a woman that struggles with sleep, and I know a lot of our audience members struggles with sleep, that this will be really helpful for them. Um, so definitely make sure you go check out Dr. Robbins' website, rebecca-robbins.com. And also check out the Beauty Rest sleep tracker because I'm just starting it out. But so far, it's been really helpful in terms of measuring my sleep and figuring out what I actually need to improve upon. Cause like she said, there are three different components to insomnia and my issue is not being able to get back to sleep. I can pass out anywhere if you lay me horizontally, seriously on the floor, it's dangerous. Anyway, um, yeah, so make sure you subscribe to HP Fit TV, leave a comment, tell us what you like, what you didn't like, what you wanna see more of, um, and we'll see you next week.